Welcome to Cool Discussions, a show where nothing is off the limits. I'm Chris, this is Barry. Hello. And uh, let's get going. I just want to say something first. Sorry. Welcome to our first show ever, guys. Uh, this is going to be, we're, we're going to be putting on a weekly uh, weekly show where we're just uh, going to be talking about our opinions about stuff that's going on in the world, happenings in the world, anything that's uh, world events, um, entertainment, movies, sports, Personal politics, events. religion, everything, anything you can think about, we're going to be doing it. We're going to be talking about giving our opinions, and uh, we just appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, giving us some of your time. Yes, thank you. So today we're going to start off with something that's been in the news a little bit, been uh, one of the big things. It's uh, a Netflix documentary called Making a Murderer. Um, we've uh, we've both watched part of the series so far. You know, we've watched the first two or three episodes, and uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's about a gentleman named uh, Steve Avery, who was uh, falsely accused of a sexual assault back in 1980-something. He was accused of a sexual assault, and he spent 18 years in prison for it. And then he was finally released after DNA testing exonerated him from doing it. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. We're going to give our thoughts on the show. So that is actually what the first uh, two episodes do talk about. Is the first episode is about uh, the case against him and him going to jail. The second one was about the DNA testing and getting him out of jail. Yes. And then uh, uh, near the end of the second one, it talks about uh, a murder he supposed to have committed. Yeah, that they're now that that's kind of where they're going into is they they've got him in two thousand and five, I think it was, on another murder that they're kind of uh, trying to railroad him, in my opinion, a little bit on. Um, so yeah, um, I think that uh, I think the the early on in the episodes it casts a very grim light over the justice system, especially in America. Like yes. obviously this is in America, and we're in Canada. So for those who don't know, hi Canada, coming from me from uh, from Alberta. Um, and so, like, it, it is a little bit different, but I think it still gives you an idea of corruption, a little bit of corruption in the justice system. And what I've taken away from it is, how can you trust the justice system in this situation? You know, I know DNA testing is a little bit better now, so things like that probably don't happen, but I'm sure they do, right? Well, that's kind of what they're they're getting to the point of, is, is that uh, there's some... DNA evidence about the murder that's that that they all suddenly have, and it's like, well, was it there in the first place? Did they plant it? And, you know, if they planted it, how did they do it? And that's what the the sheriff office does say. It's like, oh, it's not like we just walk around with Steve Avery's blood in our pocket and some yeah. DNA evidence handy, so we can just spread it all over whenever we need to. And yeah. it's just like, well. If you're setting a guy up, you don't really walk around with the evidence. Yeah. But as police officers, because you've had a lot of encounters with Steve Avery, you had this huge chance to get blood because you had taken a blood sample from him before he was arrested. Um, they've had him in jail. They've had mug shots and all kinds of things like that. So it's not like they don't have opportunity. That was a big thing there when they were when they arrested him or when they when they took him for the assault in back in the first one. The just the whole handling of it was a little bit odd to me. The person who went in to interview the victim at the first in in the first place was like, "Hey, oh, the victim described the person, the assailant, and was like, oh, that looks like Steve Avery.' Oh, it sounds actually, it's yeah. Like oh, sorry, it sounds like uh, Steve Avery. Yeah, sorry, yeah. and it's like, well. Number one, is that is that professional to be doing that as a as a as a, as as a, a cop? No, uh, cops are supposed to keep people out of it. You know, it's one thing to uh, when you, when they do the lineups uh, and they have everybody standing in it. Um, they they show you the picture of those these people in the lineup. And from what my understanding of what lineups are supposed to be is, you're supposed to have five similar people to see if that person can actually spot them. Yeah, but. Avery was short. Three of the people in that tall. lineup were really tall, like a head over him easily. Didn't one not even have a beard? Yeah, one of them didn't even have a beard. And it's just like, 
what kind of lineup is this? It's, it's, it's like they were leading this this person to to that. I got that impression too. It was like um, when the cop was talking to the rape victim, uh, she uh, got the description of the guy, and the cop said, "Oh, that sounds like Steve Avery." Yeah, and then they got a uh, um, the sketch guy, the, the sketch uh, artist, Eugene Cucci or whatever. Yeah, they got a sketch artist, and this is where. I th- am muddled in my opinion about this, right. but it basically sounds like they were trying to say, oh, here's a picture of the guy. Yeah. Draw him. It, it's almost like they went, oh, yeah, we're going to go pick out this this picture, and he just drew that picture, and that's exactly what it is. And then, later on, he like frames it as like a prize, it seems like. Okay, uh, now, now, I get that. You know, this is his, uh, this was a first time sketch artist. This is the first time he's ever done it. So, he, he made a sketch. It resulted in conviction. He's proud of his sketch. I get that. I you guess, know, but should, is you he... know, it's like, hey, look, I helped catch a rapist. I get that. He was proud of what he did. Yeah, but there's, there's a difference. Like, you're a, you're a, you're like a law enforcement officer. I don't think there's anything in law. Like there's certain professions that you can't be proud of what you do. Maybe not in such a public way. Not like I'm gonna frame this picture, bam, put it on my wall. You can't do that as a cop. Like how can you do that? How can you sit there and go, oh look, ha ha ha, I win, ha ha ha. Like that's kind of how it comes across. Like, but okay, I'm the winner. That is human nature. It is human nature to have trophies. Exactly. So so how does that not how does that not make you go as a person and go, oh, if I get pulled over by a cop, what if they just do something because they want to make themselves look important? You know, everybody in this world tries to justify their job. Why wouldn't the cops try to do that? You know what I mean? So maybe they're having a bad day and they're like, well, I'm going to make this guy uh, and, day okay, bad too, that right? That is actually what um, I- I'm finding that this series so far um, doesn't communicate with law enforcement like... It should. Um, I'm fa- finding the series very one-sided. Right. Um, generally, uh, again, just from my understanding of how journalism is supposed to work, is when you uh, talk about a topic, you're supposed to do both sides and get opposing views from the major as major of players as you can get involved into it, um, and then write about what uh, people's opinions are, uh, pros and but cons. But I think they were just taking footage, actual footage from from depositions, from from stuff like, and stuff like that, and using it as like so. They weren't necessarily directly talking with the police officers in um, for the documentary, but, but they were showing real footage and they were using but, real facts and they um, were showing. They they did talk to Avery. Yeah, you know they got his opinion. They got his mom's opinion. His dad's opinion. His aunt. Yeah, they were they had um, a whole bunch of family. Yeah, all kind. Whole they had of all, all all kinds of people yeah. talking about <clears throat> being on Steve Avery's side. That's fine, but you would have to counterpoint it with talking with those people involved on the other side. What do you think that the? What do you think the cops would say? You know what? And if they go on the record as saying no comment, simple as that. You know. Um, but we don't know that. Then maybe they did. Maybe they did try to reach out to them. And they, you know, like... Uh, they they do do a... Every now and then they do the written portion of it saying... Yeah. Uh, such a date this happened or such a date yeah. this happened. You know, they could have quite easily have said, we reached out to this guy, this guy, this guy, this yeah. guy. They all said they don't want to talk on camera. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. At that point in time, you're reaching out and trying to talk to somebody else. Yeah. So, I get it. However... It doesn't come across like they're like trying they to do that. So, it's very one-sided in my opinion. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, it really seems like they push really hard to railroad him into circumstances. Yeah. Okay? And um, the, the the sheriff office has gone on record. Uh, I've read it in the, a few local uh, newspaper articles saying... They, Sheriff has said, don't forget, there's a lot of physical evidence that was there. Now, in the third episode, they have, they do talk about some of that physical evidence in the uh, murder charges that he's going up against. Now, uh, they take the depositions, and 
you know what? One thing, it's really easy to edit something to make it look bad. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You could take something out of context. Yeah. If you take it out of context, you can make a person look like a complete and total a yeah. hole. Yeah. Okay. But are these records not available to just look at? Like now, because it's been so long, long enough from the first one, I'm not 100 percent. Uh, I am so. actually. I don't know anything yeah. about that. I have. Um, okay. Uh, but on that, on the just on the thing of like taking it for both sides, right? Normally, in from what I know of law and stuff like that, is that the the state has their opportunity to give their opinions and to and like it's all that's what the court case is about. Whereas like the family and the victim, they don't get a lot of chance to speak out and to be heard about. Hey, I feel this way. I feel that way. And I think that's what this this documentary is doing. It's saying, "Hey, you guys saw because this se- it seemed like it was a very public court case. It was very out in the media. It was very known to to the people in the in the area what was going on, right? So I think it's just giving a different perspective of it. So they like w- we saw what the media portrayed back then, right? And now we're seeing Steve Avery's family going, "Hold on." This is this isn't this is our side here, you know. We know like this is how we feel. We feel that the cops are being like are totally against us because number one, they were the outcasts of the town. It seemed like nobody really liked them. There was an incident with Steve Avery and his cousin who was married to a police officer of like, oh, I ran you off the road. I pulled a gun on you. Steve Avery did because she accused him of like sexual misconduct. I think it was. Uh, yeah, like being yeah, lewd like yeah. showing him his dick and stuff like that and it's like so there's a little bit of a motive to because you know what happens if somebody to your wife go you know shows them their dick you'd be like I want to get you you know what I mean <laughs> well like, you gonna, walk up to the guy you punch him in the face yeah, you kick him in the nuts and you're done with it but it was a cop so he has more means to you know and it was like when they arrested this guy when they they didn't even consider this other guy Gregory Allen right where the the one cop got a phone call from another county, from, and saying, we have Gregory Allen here, saying that he committed that crime that somebody else is in jail for. In 1995, he got that phone call. He didn't report this until 2003, after Steve Avery got out. Eight years after he got out. What? Uh, actually, it was 2003 he got out. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, no, no. I, uh, again, you watch the series, and it's like, Wow, um, how could uh, you? How could cops do this? This is uh, horrendous because that's not due process. No, from what I understand, it's, it's, it's like you're supposed to eliminate all other possibilities. You're supposed to be innocent to proven guilty, and it almost comes across as guilty until you can prove otherwise. Yeah, okay, I get that. I get it that that's what the uh, the sheriff's officers were doing. They were stating he was guilty, and there was no chance. Yeah. So and like, that, that's all they did was like, okay, he's guilty, so we got to find this, we got to find this, we got to find this. Oh, hey, guess what? We found this. Yeah. And guess what? Oh, we found this too. And it's like, well, in even in the depositions... Uh, because, okay, they had the written statements from everybody involved, and the depositions took place in 2004? 2005. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's a when couple, he got arrested. A year or two murder. after yeah. he was uh, released. Because yeah. <clears throat> he was going for a lawsuit. Yep. And every single one of those officers says, I don't know. Backtracked. I don't they tried recall. Yeah. They, they, they did the, I don't know. And when would <clears throat> they do that? When you do that, does that not seem like you're guilty? Like, when you sit there, honestly, when you sit there and go, oh, I don't recall. Now, now, really? okay, now, you're talking about it is almost a long time 20 ago. years of time. Now, your memory isn't always the best. You're not going to yeah. remember everything. But when it's something that big, when you're a police officer yeah. and you're talking about a case, these are things you need to remember. Yeah. I get this. And yes, uh, Steve Avery was suing. The county for... $36 million. What? Yes. And on top of that, uh, I guess uh, it was found out that the insurance wouldn't cover it. So this was a straight out of their pockets. 
So and this the is, reason that the insurance sorry the no. reason that the insurance wouldn't cover it is because it was proven that there was mishandling of of this case from the beginning. They, so the insurance company went, well, we're not going to cover you because of the neglect that you guys showed, and it was proven, proven without a doubt that there was neglect, there was mishandling of everything. Yes, and uh, the local legislature actually passed a law called the Avery Law, yeah. uh, stating actually I spaced out when they were talking about that. I'm sorry, I did. Um, it's pretty much just to protect people from having this, ha- like having this type of thing happen to Yeah. For, but again, I you know, all the politicians, specific. all the politicians jumped on Steve Avery's back when they, when he seemed like the good guy. And that's just, you know, that's another topic for another day, guys. <laughs> um, and, you know, as soon as he got re-arrested, all of them just jumped off. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, at first, they were, most of them were on his side. A couple distanced themselves. But as it started proceeding, and it started to look more and more likely that he was guilty, yeah. they started Going distancing low. themselves, you know, just like, yeah, I have nothing to do with him. Uh, some uh, uh, group that he was a part of, um, they removed him from his website. Yeah, it was the Wisconsin In- Innocent Pro- Innocence Project, and they were helping him kind of fight the good fight because he was proven innocent and stuff like that but you know they took 18 years away from him like how do you give that back like how do yeah. you and, that's and, horrible oh this this actually made me mad because uh, he went to sue them and uh, the judge a judge I don't uh, not a specific one just a judge in the case was saying well we should put the cap at $25,000 a, a year, a year. Or no, for no, it was, compensation. Wasn't it cap $25,000 a year? I think it was $25,000 maximum. Not a year, but 25000 maximum that he could get. Oh. Yeah. Well, okay. So that's like even more infuriating. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, I think it worse. was like $5,000 a year, maximum 25000 Yeah, So because like, uh, I don't know too much about Canadian law. Uh, I don't know much about American law. Yeah. But I do know that in Canada, if somebody is falsely accused, they tend to co- compensate, compensate them. For uh, 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 some time, maybe not the whole yeah. sentence, but they do compensate them for time. It's, it's like just it's, it's complete butt kiss, you know. It just makes me angry to see that there was it was there was no nobody was held accountable for for the actions that very were, true that were there. There was nobody. There was proven that that certain people took neglect, and they even did an, like an internal investigation. From you know those people who came in and did the depositions and stuff like that. Yeah, they did an internal investigation. They even said in their investigation write up, there has been mishandling of this case, the Steve yep. Avery case, and nobody got in trouble. Nobody. They they went to the district attorney or something like that, and the district attorney went, oh, we found there was really nothing wrong. Yeah, there's and no and nothing, and I'm like, what? Wow, what? <laughs> and I'm I totally starting to understand why there's been a total. Uh, loss of faith in the justice system in America. Like I'm, I'm starting to get a, a little bit more of a deeper understanding of why uh, things are happening in the states. It's like you know what, if this is what happens in uh, in, in the case of Steve Avery, I just I've always wow, been- it's so much. I guarantee you, it's so much worse in regards to. Everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. And if, like, if this is just this is a glaring case. This is a case of so much misconduct and neglect and injustice that it had to be, like, put out there. It had to be shown. It had to be this, you know. And and so imagine what's happening in everyday life. Imagine what's happening from everyday cops. Imagine that. That, that this is what Whoa. this is how I look at it. Everybody that when you walk into a courtroom, I've had some experiences with like a t- like tickets. When you walk into a courtroom to fight these tickets, I feel that. You are walking in as an individual, and every single person up there is on the same team. The judge, the lawyer, the cops. They're all on the same team. You know what I mean? I'm going to give you one example how, why I believe this. I got a just, just distracted driving ticket when I was working as a courier. I was at a red light. A cop pulls up beside me, and I'm on my telephone looking at some GPS for an address. Crap. Okay. Cop pulls me over. All right. I got caught. I'll do the ticket. No problem. Uh, I thought red lights were okay. Mm, they're not. What? Yeah. Oh, really? So, and <laughs> so the cop comes uh, up to me. He goes, License and registration. He goes, You know, I, what you were doing wasn't that bad, but unfortunately, I have to pull you over. 
Goes, gives him, writes me a ticket. He says, I put some notes on the back of your ticket. Go to the courthouse on the date here. They'll reduce your fine to like 50 or $60. Okay. From $172. That's what they charge us for. Well, when I got it, it was $172. Now it's almost 300 And demerit points. Yes. That's Alberta for you. Cash grab. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, I'm pissed off. Because really, the cop could have just kept going and not done anything. Because I wasn't hurting anybody. I wasn't doing anything bad, you know. Okay, so I go to court that day, right? All right, go in this line. Okay, what do you want to, why are you here? Well, the cop said, okay, well, go to this courtroom. Okay, all right, uh, so I go up in front of the judge, and, you know, I'm mad already because I'm wasting half a day. And they're like, pretty much the the prosecutor, the, the lawyer person said before to somebody else who got the same ticket, I'm not being lenient on any of these. I don't care. So I kind of went, what? So I just wasted half so a day. So I just wasted half my day. Like, I have no problem paying the fine. If I got caught, fine. So I'm not going to not text and drive. I'm still going to look at my telephone because I feel I'm a safe driver. Whatever. Call me stupid. I don't care. <laughs> and so, like, that's that's kind of why I look at it that way. So it doesn't matter what the cop writes. It doesn't, you know. So I get up there and they're like, oh, you're he's looking for a reprieve, right, on my ticket. And the lawyer's like, we're not in any mood to do that. And I went, okay, well, what am I supposed to do here? You know, I, I could sit here and bitch, I could sit here and complain, but then maybe I'll just get, I'll, I'm like, I'll just end up in jail because I'll get mad <laughs> and I'll tell them both to, where to go and how to get there. And that's kind of like this show, this documentary kind of shows to me that at least in America, and that's why I kind of like, I think we're both the same. America's a little worse, but to me, that's, that's, that's why I look at the justicism and go, hmm. Wow. Do we really stand a chance? Hmm. Interesting way yeah. of putting that, actually. You know? So, like, that that's kind of, like, my take on this um, whole documentary. It's very good. It's very good. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, definitely watch it. Watch it. it, it it's on Netflix. So far, I have only watched three episodes. I'm probably going to end up watching the rest of it over the next week. And we well, I've watched the whole thing, but I'm re-watching it. Um, so it's great. So guys, next week we'll uh, we'll talk about what more that we've seen on it, and we'll talk about how the reaction of uh, just on social media and in the media today, how everybody's trying to I guess come to Steve Avery's um, defense right now, um, and we'll kind of give our comments on that um, in kind of next week or the week after whenever we get the series completely finished. But next week for sure we'll talk about. A little bit more of it because it's very very good it's a very interesting it's very it, it just opens your mind and makes you think yeah you know? and uh that's entirely what the series is about is to open your mind make you think make you question and uh when you're talking about documentaries it's exactly what you want to see yeah um you don't want it to be a cookie cutter uh happy ending type thing. Yeah. I have no I, I know the guy is still in jail right now and there's a lot of opinion about it right now, yeah. so we're kind of well, it's currently happening, so we gotta wait and see. It's definitely a very current event and it's definitely uh, got the attention of a lot of people right now. A mm. lot of people. It's it's a very, very hot buzz right now. So Yes it is. You know. We'll see what happens with that. We'll see what's coming up, right? Mm hmm Hopefully. So guys come back next week and we'll uh, we'll talk more about it. But stay here because we got more to talk about still. Um, up in Canada, guys, it's coming up on tax season. Well, actually, in the States, too, it is tax time. Oh, I guess, tax yeah. Time tax time everywhere. Everyone. It's Ooh. that time of the year where we have to pay. <sighs> well, we pay taxes all the time. Man. But where we find out whether or not we owe more taxes or we get some of back. it back. Yay. Yay. Do we get some <laughs> of it back? I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. So as, uh, as we said before. We're, uh, we're up in Canada, and we're in Alberta, so each province, for you American people or people around the world who are going to be watching us, um, each province has their own tax, tax system, system as, as, well as well as a federal, federal system. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Alberta's new tax system, because we just elected a new government. Well, well I did Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, completely different story. Actually, you know what? Let's just talk just a little bit about the federal bit. Again, we just elected a new uh, government. Not and, this guy. And uh, the he promised that there would be a tax cut on our federal taxes for the middle class. Now, that went into effect, and yes, there was a tax cut. 
very small one it amounted to about if you're lucky 862 dollars a year now unfortunately he also raised the taxes well depending on you want to look at it he raised the taxes on the rich to cover the uh the shortfall of uh revenue however once he crunched the numbers he found out the the, the revenue shortfall wasn't going to be made up apparently there are not enough rich people to tax in canada so that was that and on top of that he raised uh our canadian pension plan which is something that automatically comes off all of our checks here in canada um we pay it whether or not we want to and we get to well i don't know if we would get to enjoy it when we're 65 but the people who are turning 65 we'll now get to enjoy it that's one thing that that irks me a lot about the taxes system and and just government in general you're gonna find that i no, I don't like government too much. And <laughs> I actually do think a government is necessary for the things that need to happen. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> that, that definitely will be a topic Yes. on this show for sure. Tune in for that stuff because that's going to be good. But I think the CPP should be an optional plan. I don't think you should force me to take off Canada Pension Plan, especially if it's not going to be there. Like, you're taking this money from me and you're putting it into just general revenue and using it. No, for um, stuff. You're not, but okay, if CPP you, is actually a separate fund. Okay, but that if you're is taking off it, to the side, if you're taking it from me, how come it's not going to be there? How come I not guaranteed? Like it should be. You're taking twenty dollars, or uh, say you take twelve hundred dollars a year, right? So when I'm sixty five, and you did that since I've started working, eighteen years old, I go to sixty five. That's how many years? Sixty, fifty, some odd years, fifty seven years, yeah. right? I should have fifty seven years of twelve hundred dollars a year built up into an account that I can just access anytime I want. But it's not that way, is it? Yeah, it's kind of weird how money works with uh, the government. Money kind of disappears in strange and unusual ways. So, And it, it's long been said that the CPP will be broke by the time most baby boomers are going to retire, let alone us. How does it go broke? How does it go... Please, somebody explain to me how this happens. How does our money that you're taking from me... Con- every two weeks you take money from me to go into this program. And where does it go? How is it going to grow? How is it not going to be available to me? So give me the option not to participate in this program. Give me the option not to participate in EI. Give me those two options to say, okay, when I retire, it's all on me. Personal accountability. I need to set myself up for retirement. I don't need to set you up for retirement or you don't have to set me up for retirement. We have to set ourselves up for retirement. Let people be responsible. If you want to be in the program, no problem. I have no problem with that. Go ahead. Let them take your money. You know what I mean? So where does it go? Where does this money go? I'm sure you don't have the answer because I don't have no, the answer. I... <laughs> but it's like if I give out, give you my money, I want to know that I'm going to be able to retire and be, have a thousand bucks a month yep. or whatever it's going to be, right? True enough. You know, our mom is close to retirement. So it's like, is she going to have the retirement there? I'm sure she will because there's still money in it. But Yes, yes. It's, it comes down to uh, people our age, 30-somethings. Yeah. Are yeah. they, is the money going to be there when we retire? And who knows? It's hard to say one way or the other. Um, so that was generally the federal stuff. And, you know, everybody has to deal with federal stuff. <sighs> and everybody has a different way of dealing with it. Now, here in Alberta, we elected a new government, which was the NDP. Oh, which, for uh, uh, the Americans out there, they're a socialist government. Uh, they tend to be... Uh, Pro union, pro uh, cradle to grave government. Okay, uh, we just got rid of a progressive conservative government, which tends to be should have been um, uh, tight on the budget, trying to keep things under control, less government, less hands in your pocket. Supposed to be, they totally <laughs> were. That's why they lost and got kicked out uh, by a route from the NDP. Now, Which end- was totally unexpected, honestly. Um, I think that a lot of people went in and uh, voted without being a hundred percent informed, without being, um, with not knowing the whole story. I think a lot of people just went and went and voted and went, um, went. I don't want the PC in it anymore, um, so I'm just going to vote for somebody else, the NDP. And I think it was an accident. That the NDP got in. I now, think it was that might not necessarily be true. In four years, when we have another general uh, provincial election, they could win. 
They However, won't. I have a really strong feeling that they're not they're going not. to. It's just whether or not uh, the gonna take over? official opposition can get their ass together and do I think it's it time right. to think outside the box for Alberta. I think it is. I think it's time to, to take on a, a new direction. I think a new political party needs to step up and be given a chance to... Well, that's what the Wild Rose is But they're the same, though. They're, they're, they're still really... They're just a little bit more um, off of PC. Are the, the PC or center, NDP or left. Yeah. And uh, Wild, Wild Rose. Rose are right. Are they? Yes. Like completely right? <laughs> so or... much so that they actually had to kick a couple of their... MPs out, uh, not this past election, but the election before that because of controversial statements. Mm. Yeah. I'm mm. sure a lot of people make controversial statements, just not on their social media. So, yeah. A lot of people aren't happy with the new government in uh, Alberta. Uh, um, well, it also doesn't help that we are in the middle of a oil recession. Yeah. Uh, we, unfortunately, rely on a boom and bust cycle here in Alberta. And right now we're in a bust. So so right it now it's sucks. especially hard <laughs> with the NDP because they are the, as Chris put it, the cradle to grave. So that means they have it to cost tax. a lot of money. Yes, they have to tax us more. And, and they are. They that's are. That's for sure. Alberta, up until January of 2016, used to have one flat rate for taxes. So on the provincial scale 10%. taxes, 10% across the board, doesn't matter how much money you make. 10%. Yeah. Which is great because it, 10%. I, I think they've adjusted it for 2015 tax year of where the highest is going to be 11.25, I think. Yeah. Doesn't sound like a, a, a big jump, but when you are talking, if you're making $100,000 a year, that's an extra $1,500 off your paycheck. Just gone yeah. to taxes. So no more in your pocket. It's gone. And unfortunately, uh, there has been a lot of taxes going around in Alberta. Uh, one of the most popular ones is called the sin tax. Oh man! <clears throat> now I'm not a smoker. No, neither am I. So uh, the prices of cigarettes since the uh, NDP government, or actually just before the NDP government was elected, but you live with a smoker, right? Yeah, I do. So. That affects you. Uh, getting, there, getting there. I know. That's why I'm talking about it. Um, uh, okay. Taxes went up uh, $8 a carton over six months. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking about a pack-a-day habit, yeah, that's basically two cartons a week. Yeah. Gone. And you're paying... Sixteen dollars more, eight dollars more a week. Now that's a carton. That's if you're buying wholesale. Yeah. We're if you're talking about a pack of cigarettes, I've heard that it ranged anywhere from a dollar to four dollars a pack. Wow, it's insane, right? It's so insane. imagine that a pack a day habit, and you're paying four dollars more. More. I, I've never understood why people go to a store and buy a pack. I, uh, because I'm not a smoker, because I always think, you know what, you should buy wholesale. Buy a carton. Yeah. But people buy packs, which is really weird. Yeah. But that's how corner stores and stuff like that... Do you manage. really think it's appropriate to just be taxing, like, the, they call it the sin tax, right? Mm-hmm. Do you really, like, think that's fair? How so? Like, you're putting... Not the whole... You're, ta- you're not taxing the whole population. So, you, people, like... From what I understand, the NDP wants to tax the upper class more money, to be fair, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But now you're putting tax on something that not the whole population does. True. You're but putting more tax on to, to, to booze, to cigarettes, but the whole population doesn't do that, so is that fair? Hmm. Not in my mind. I'm a drinker. I like to drink. I'm not a drinker, so, so the sin taxes don't actually technically affect me. But I understand because, uh, one, I live with a smoker, and it's uh, a painful cost I have to absorb. I work with smokers, yeah. and to hear them complain about it constantly is just like... So, with the, with the whole being fair of making the upper class pay more, right, and then taxing only us... I don't know what the... Like perc- I don't know what the percentage of population who smokes and drinks would be, but now you're only taxing 
those people. So in the same breath, you're saying I want to be fair by making everybody pay the you know pay their equal share, but then you're taxing a group over here saying hmm, sorry guys because you do the sinful things. <laughs> well, that's why they call you it know, sin it's taxes. Like, because okay, theoretically, if a sin tax is involved because the the people the population that in, in that is involved in smoking and drinking tend to be the ones that cost the health system more money. Okay, um, that's fine. But then why don't we just charge those? Why don't we charge, a, instead of doing a sin tax, why don't we go back to a health care premium? Why don't we, that just goes to health care? But, okay, a uh, health care premium has never gone just to health care. Okay, but it should. That's what I mean. But like, is that not mismanagement the, the, of money? They will never do that. You will never why get don't? a government why? that goes, oh, we're going to tax you. And put it in a fund. No, they will never do that. They will put it in general re- revenue and use it for whatever they happen to need a shortfall of. But isn't that mismanagement and irresponsible? Yeah, it is. So then why are we just concurrently... Why do we just keep going in the same circle of electing governments that continue to do that? Uh, that that's, that's exactly. So we're all just banging our freaking heads against the wall and complaining about our governments, but what do we do as a society? Nothing. We don't. We just continue to go to the, go to the poll. Hmm. Okay. Check. And then, man, I'm sick of this government. Man, I'm sick of this government. Man, I'm sick of this government. But we don't change. We never sit there and change because number one, we don't really have an option on how to change because of our how our democratic system is. Um. So like, it just makes no sense to me. It just makes zero sense. You're sitting there. You tax these people because they're a sin. Okay. But what if I smoke and I drink, but I'm still a healthy person? What if I take care of myself and I still do these things, and I don't cost any more on the healthcare system? How, does that? I still don't benefit from. No. It. I, but what I, if Mister <clears throat> Beastman who eats fast food all day? Oh, okay. And that's the whole point of okay. The whole point of taxing is it, you don't tax people based off what they end up doing. You tax them as a society, saying you know what. This is for the benefit of everyone. Healthcare is a benefit for everyone. Yeah, I know. I get right? it. So if if you only taxed people who used the healthcare system, you would never make enough money to keep the healthcare system running. That's fine. I'm not saying to, to, to just tax the people, but you're sitting and you just said, in that breath there, you said that you have to tax the whole society in general to make things run. Yes. But then, you know, the sin tax doesn't tax the whole population. No, it taxes but, only a handful. No, of but he, he, here's the thing: those people don't have to buy booze or buy smokes. Yeah, you're right. And so they are being taxed because they are doing. So why it. don't we go tax the rock climber? Because he he doesn't have to go climb a rock and fall off it, then go to the hospital for five months. Why don't we tax the kayaker? Why don't we tax the skateboarder? Why don't we tax the rollerblader? The guy who rides without a helmet. <laughs> well, no, actually, they do. Ticket people for not using a helmet. Yeah. So okay, that, but still, that is a form of a tax. That's not a tax, though. That's no, not, it is like an is. everyday tax. When I every time, like every time I use booze, I pay an extra five percent. I think. It was. Uh, okay. Right. Now uh, let's run a couple numbers by you guys. Okay. Um, uh, the Calgary Sun did an article about yes. how much we do actually pay for booze. Alberta is now the highest uh, paid. Or we pay the highest amount for booze in most of Canada now. On a twelve say, pack of Molson Canadian, I read the number. It was three dollars more than any other province. It was twenty nine something, and the next one was twenty six dollars. So yeah. we pay three dollars more for our Molson Canadian, and it's like, yeah, I choose to drink, but should I be punished for it? Uh, uh it's just a way of generating revenue. It's like you know, uh, no, I, I get, I know, I get what they're now, doing. Now, the, okay. And it's just one of the easiest vices to go after, smoking and drinking, right? Because not everybody does it because you'll get least amount of people complaining. But it comes back to the, okay, if you're, if, you know, it comes back to the, like, the tax on them is because it's easy and it causes a strain on our healthcare system, but then so does extreme sports. So does, it's just, it's kind of like, to me, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a never ending circle of like. Hey, we're, why don't you just come out and say oh, we're taxing but, you because we need to tax you because we're overspending? Why don't but, you just be uh, honest? Okay, now, now, hold on, hold on. There, there is this point. Now, Alberta, again, is something we call the Alberta Advantage One, the flat tax on our provincial it's tax. Gone. It's gone. Um, now, 
Everywhere else in Canada, uh, they have a provincial sales tax. In Alberta, we still don't, so we only pay 5% GST. Yes. Everywhere else, you have a PST or yes. an HST. But all those all those prices that they gave us for the booze was w- w- all in. Yeah, no, it, it was. And we still pay more money. Let's get it. But here's the thing. What do you think would have happened if they had actually introduced a PST? So why don't they just do that? And... And that is also a nice, easy answer. Everybody gets hit. But I... I don't think they should do either. I just want to put that on the Okay, okay right there I we go. I, like, I'm me, not... I don't care, because it's not something that hugely affects me. But you know what? A PST affects everything. See, that's what I mean. Like, you, And you, I can almost guarantee you that there would be a storming you of sit there. You sit there, and because it doesn't affect you, you're okay with the syntax, right? Exactly. You're okay with that. And that's I think that's a bad mentality to have. Uh, but it it's, is it's very one just... of those mentalities that happens in politics. Yeah. It's like, oh, it doesn't affect me. I'm okay with it. But that's that's bad, because we're all supposed to be in it for the for the common good. We're all supposed to work together to be to make this place great. To make Alberta good. To make Canada good. To make the world good. But then we have people who sit there and have the mentality of it doesn't affect me so i don't care so it only affects you over there (laughs) okay you can pay more taxes it doesn't affect me so to be fair they should just suck it up be like what it really is it's a money grab they need money so why don't they just go pst too bad it affects everybody now you're just going in your 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 segregating groups of people who can be mad oh i want to I don't want to piss off the whole mass population, but so I'm going to piss off little but, bits of but, it, pockets okay, of it. But that's what politicians have to do. Is they have to. So they're they not... can choose who they piss off because in the end they have to get elected. Exactly. And so you it's get not... elected by pissing off the fewest number of people. So it's not. And a PST would piss off everybody. So what you're telling me is when a politician sits there and says, "We want Alberta to be good. We want the best Alberta we can do." As long as we don't piss everybody off. As long We're going to we piss can... off the least amount of no, people. No, 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 no. They're like, we want Alberta to be good. We want everybody to have jobs. And we got to do it and still get elected. Yeah, so it's so, not truthful. So but, you're just lying. You're just... But politicians as a whole have been... Are liars. As a whole. So... Done deal. Oh, it, you know, you can broad stroke it. Uh, I am broad stroking it. Yes. Uh, they are all liars. It's who you align with the most that is why you tend to vote for who you vote for. Okay, but what if I align with a little bit of everybody? What if I want a little bit of but, and, everybody? And, and here's the thing. All political parties try to align a little bit of everything. They always try to go in the center because if they go too far right, not enough voters. If they go too far mm. left, not enough voters. Um, so they always try to balance the middle while still being so then why this we, political party. Why, like, we're, why don't why do we have to have a majority government? And wouldn't it be more beneficial to have a minority government uh, now to it, to protect all of us so that one government can't come in here like the NDP and go? Ah, too bad for you guys. We're putting through everything well, we want. And, and okay, there's always been a flaw with political uh, the, any kind of political system. There's always some sort of flaw uh, in our system. The first pass to post. System is whereas you can uh, earn a, a parliament seat with only thirty six percent of the votes. Yeah. Um, it was designed so you can have majority governments that can actually get work done. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you have a um, uh, representational government, um, you, you what ends up happening is no work gets done because nobody can figure out who wants to be in charge. Or if you have a two party system. Mm-hmm. Well, it's either. Oh, I don't yeah. want to name names. I'm <laughs> sure there are other. I'm in gonna a... name names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the two party system, it's either this guy or this guy. Yeah. They're both evil, both dicks. What are you gonna do? You have to pick one or the other. Yes, you could not vote, but at that point in time, in my opinion, if you don't vote. You can't complain. Oh, that's because totally... you are not taking wow. part. But because but that's the thing. When you okay. vote, when you vote, you could pick party A, B, C. Sometimes there's D and F, or you could just go all the above. Okay, but this is and this is you where mark your ballot, but you voted. But this is this is where I come from. I'm not a vote. I don't vote, but I still believe that I've I have been a, voting since I could. I still believe I have a right to voice my opinion I've, because I pay taxes. I'm a tax-paying citizen, so therefore, 
If you want to take that away from me and not make me pay taxes, then I won't complain. You guys can go fight your fights, and I'll be over in my own little world. But as long as I have to pay taxes, I have a right to an opinion. I have a right to a voice. My voice is I'm not, not going to vote. argue on that much, but I'm, I am going to state that you have to my vote. My voice is that I don't have a choice. I want... Well, I guess in Alberta, in provincial elections, and I didn't know this till this year, you can go in and decline your ballot, which means... I encourage everybody to do this who doesn't want to vote for a party. Um, it is you go in and you say, I'm declining my ballot. And that counts your vote as a as a vote for none of the above, essentially. Because I feel if you go in there and you spoil your ballot, what she was talking about by marking all of the above, I don't think it gets counted. Because when you see the numbers come out, you don't see... There's no, there's no slot that says Other. spoiled mm-hmm. ballots, okay. right? So I know in Ontario, they, they had a provincial election, and they had, I can't remember the exact percentage, but they they they, they had a big percentage of declined ballots. What? So mean? I think that, it, I would totally go do that. And that's why I didn't vote in the federal election, because you don't have that option. You cannot do that. So these people who <coughs> went and voted in the, in, the, in the election for Alberta, and accidentally voted in NDP, I think... Me not voting is better than somebody who's misinformed, undereducated voting. Because they're going in there to spite. They're going uh, in there to go, I don't want these okay, guys. You, they're not you, voting for somebody. Okay, you do have a point there. Um, it is strongly encouraged that if you are going to vote, be informed. Find out what your, do the, your the research. party... Do your research. Find out what the parties have to say. Find out what the parties are going to do. Because, yes... If you don't vote, the party's still going to do it. Yeah. If you vote, at least you tried to make it a difference. And uh, the decline ballot, ballot, a very good idea, actually. And uh, that should be something that should be in the federal one. Because who knows? Because I think what would have happened if a lot of... And I don't even know if people know about this, the declining ballot. You no, know? I didn't. And, uh, he, you had mentioned it to me before. Yeah. I completely forgot about it. And but so, it's actually a really good way of making your opinion heard. Because, you know, at, in a riding, if you have just as many people declining a ballot, ballot then as there are to actually vote for a person... And then we have a problem. A yeah, that says a lot. Because I think that if a lot of people knew it, maybe I think that the outcome of this past election would have been different. Um, I'm not sure the that... The NDP still NDP, might have won. I'm however, not sure. I, however, out of... It, it might have gone like uh, 20% NDP, 15% Wild Rose, 5% PC, and 20% declined. Yeah. In which case, you have, have a large at, yeah, part a lot of, of people po- going, population going, hey, you know what? We don't like anybody. And that's where, you know, I understand when, you know, people don't vote because, you know, they're like, oh, I don't vote because I don't care. But me, I, I do, I do have a little bit of a care and a little bit of knowledge about it. And I, I do, so when somebody says that, when you, oh, you don't vote, you don't have opinion, or people died for you to vote, it's like, okay, hold on. Number one, I pay taxes, so I do have an opinion. Number two, these people died for me to, for the right to choose. Yes. Not to vote. They were they, they were writing for my freedom. So my freedom to not vote is a freedom. Is, is a freedom. But I do want to vote. I do want to participate. But I, but what I'm seeing right in front of me, I'm going, it's like I'm walking in a buffet and I'm going, uh, you know what? I'm thinking I'm just going to go across the street. Maybe there's something well, better over there. You're a buffet you know? and there's only three items to choose from. Yeah. And I'm like, but meat, I don't, meat and Meat, yeah. Yay. And I'm like, but I don't, I don't want any of those. I want, I want some vegetables today, and but they don't have that option. And I'm like, well, so when people say that, I'm like, that's that's unfair. It's not, it's not fair to me. It's just like, okay, well, I don't want to argue with you anymore in a sense, you know, because it's like, if you have that opinion, it's like, well, are you uninformed too? And it's like, are do you know why I'm not voting? And then when I tell people, they go, ah. That makes oh, a little bit and, of sense. And, and this is actually really great because th- this was uh, unusual for me. In this past federal election, uh, the people at work that I work with actually had opinions about who to vote for. And it was very interesting having discussions trying to inform people about what this party typically does. And one guy, he, he said was, um, well... Uh, it's not the same old party that they used to be. You know, it's been 10 years since they've been in. You know, they're not the same. I'm like, 
do you actually not know who are the people behind the scenes? Because the people behind the scenes probably, I don't know an exact number. I haven't checked or anything, but I have heard from uh, reliable sources that there are still people running uh, the party that have been around Rap since for a long time. 15, 20 years. I enjoy talking about politics. I enjoy having conversations with people. Oh, I, I and, love talking about you know, politics. But And then, unfortunately, you get people that are uh, very... You don't agree with me? Shut up. Go yeah, away. Exactly. And it can be very exactly. difficult to yeah, talk absolutely. about things like that. Whereas, you know, myself, I, I like to think I have an open mind and I'll listen to people who... I who, have a partially open mind. Who talk to <laughs> who talk about whatever they want to talk about. As long as you are willing to listen to me and, and understand where I'm coming from and yep. not and not make me feel shamed about my opinion and my choices, then, then I'm cool with that. But politics shame, is going to be... Uh, shame and guilt. I will make you feel shame <laughs> and guilt. <laughs> politics is going to be a big... Uh, a big topic on this show. I'm, uh, well, I'm as you could see be... from us just talking right now, uh, we have actually talked a whole part. We we kind of veered off taxes and yeah, went right okay. into politics. It's okay. Uh, it is something that does that. happen, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately. This is this is what this show is about. That's right. About everything. That's right. This show is about everything. We're going to be talking about all that kind of good stuff. Um, so we will. This is something uh, I think both uh, I've been wanting to talk about for a little while. Uh, we will, won't spend as much time as I want on it because we are nearing the end of our show. Um, we are going to talk about trailers, okay? <clears throat> and not the kind you pull behind your vehicles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are going to talk about trailers. Um, specifically right now, I'm going to talk about uh, the superhero trailers because there are a bunch of superhero movies coming out in 2016. Um, we are going to come back to the trailers topic because I want to talk about trailers as a whole. Um, and we'll kind of touch base with it here too. But let's talk about trailers and my opinion. Okay. My background in this regard is I watch um, one or two trailers and I avoid the rest. Okay, the for example, the Star Wars trailer it had uh, what seven, uh, four um, domestic releases and like three international releases. Um, I watched the first one and. I couldn't believe my excitement over it. it. You know, it was one with the hydroplaning X wings, and I was by the end of it, I was giddy. I was like, "Holy crap! This is Star Wars!" <laughs> yeah, because to 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 be fair, the prequels weren't the best movies in the no. world. No. Um, and seeing the, that first Star Wars trailer, I was giddy. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I'm excited, and this is my opinion. I was excited to see in the movie. I'm not watching another trailer because I don't want anything else spoiled. Of Star Wars? Of Star Wars. Right. Okay. So, um, uh, another one came out shortly thereafter, and people were like, oh, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. It's like, uh, you know, Han and Chewie show up. I'm like, really? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll watch it. It was almost exactly the same trailer, and Han and Chewie... Chewie show up at the end for three or four seconds. And I was like, okay, that was a waste of my time. Yeah. And, and in all honesty, because of the sh certain shows that I watch, I was going to see the Han and Chewie show up eventually anyways as a clip when people are talking about it. So that was a complete and total waste of time. Now, I made the choice not to watch any more Star Wars trailers. I think I've only seen one. I don't even know. I think I might have only seen one trailer, so... Okay. I didn't even know there were seven. <laughs> uh, well, um, I saw the movie, and I went in with no expectations. I was just excited from the trailer. I saw nothing else extra, so I had no spoilers of the movie. I think I may be the only one in the world who hasn't seen Star Wars yet. Yet. You better see it soon. Um, anyways, I watched Star Wars. I thought it was an amazing movie. Great. We'll talk about it another time. Now, this is what bugs me about trailers. Okay. Okay. For this show, I went back and actually watched all the Star Wars trailers. Now, I've been reading stuff online. People were like, oh, you got to watch the uh, the Japanese international trailer because it shows new scenes. And, oh, you got to watch this trailer because it shows even more scenes. And I find a lot of trailers give away 
too much of what's going to happen in the movie. Really? I, uh, now, I, I, I don't know, I'm just gifted. When I watch a trailer, I can actually uh, figure out what the story of the movie is. I can tell where the major scenes are. Heck, I've watched a few trailers where I've seen the ending of the movie. I went, wow, I don't need to watch the movie now because I just saw the ending right really? now. Okay. And that, it is unfortunate. Are you, watch, are you watching the trailer too closely then? <laughs> <laughs> like, are you just not taking it for what a trailer was supposed to be? A well, no, but that, a... that's the thing. It's just, um, okay, um, speculation. People like to speculate about things, like uh, in who done it. They always yeah. try to figure out who did it, right? I don't, because I can generally figure out who did it really easily. And if you figure out who did it, it spoils Boring, the yeah. whole thing. You know, you're, you're yeah. reading a book or you're watching a show and you're going... I know this is going to happen, I know this is going to happen, I know this is going to happen. And it's like, it takes away from the enjoyment of the movie or the TV. So so you're not a big fan of trailers? Okay, I love trailers, that's the thing. Yeah. Okay, Um, okay. Uh, Batman vs. Superman. I'm not looking forward to the movie. No? Um, I have a strong opinion about it. Um, But I think I've actually watched the two major trailers that have come out for it. And... I'm sure some of you have, and really, they've shown all that. Yes, I you... agree that sometimes that trailers do give away, like especially like comedy. Sometimes when you're watching a trailer for a comedy or something like that, you'll see like you'll see some funny stuff, and you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna go see that." Which and they want you to, but then the whole yep. movie is those four jokes, and you're like, "Yeah." And then they show the best part of the movies in yeah. comedies. Yes, you, I got to admit, are actually really horrible for that because they'll tell you some of the best jokes. Yeah, and it's like what in the Star Wars trailers they don't give away any of the jokes. Great, because you don't see them coming. They're funny. Yeah. Um, now there was a there's there's also this controversy of you know scenes that show up in trailers but don't show up in the movie. Mm. Now. In the first Star Wars trailer, when the main bad guy, Kylo Ren, the guy with the red lightsaber, he shows up, uh, uh, show him from the background, going into the forest, he does this, pulls out his lightsaber, right? That actually doesn't show up in the film. And people made a comment about that. But I get it, because that was really the only way you could introduce the bad guy. Without giving anything away. Without giving anything away. Because in the second trailer that you see... Of the Star Wars one, you see Kylo Ren, and you glimpse him, and he's doing something. And you actually see his face. In the other trailers, you see more of him, and it starts to take away from the story. Yeah, Those two trailers weren't bad for not giving away anything, because everything in the trailers was actually in the first, uh, what, half an hour of the film? Yeah. Which was really good, because I was excited, because it's like, oh, look, no, all new scenes. Yeah. It was great. But trailers have become really bad for that because they give away too much. Um, yeah, they give away too much, and I've been they, finding that... Really? I think I'm opposite. I don't think trailers give away anything. As long as you're not... Uh, um, well, I, I, doing. I think if you do a lot of like other research and do it, and you put them all together, maybe because you've watched so many trailers for it or something... Like, if you watch just one, I don't think you can take a lot from this one. Oh, no, but, okay, um, and that's what I, that's the reason why I've, I'm only starting to watch one trailer. Yeah. I watch one trailer, and if I'm excited about the movie, I don't watch any other trailers. The Batman vs. Superman, I'm not excited. I don't want to see it. Yeah. Um, I think it's... Silly? Yes. Yeah. Anyways, I'm watching the trailers just to see how bad it's going to be. Oh. That's awesome. No, but, hey, but that's my opinion. Yeah. The Star Wars one, I watched the first one. I'm excited to go see it. Um, there was, okay, uh, X-Men, uh, Apocalypse. I watched one trailer. Are you excited? Uh, not as much. I'm still going to go see it because Brian Singer is actually a really good director. Yeah. And he's done the X-Men series really well. Deadpool, watched the first trailer. Oh, my gosh, I'm excited to see that one. Done deal. You you sold me. I don't want to watch anymore because I don't want to see anything else. Yeah. I want the whole movie to be um, new, right? Because as I said, Batman versus Superman. You know, they. I think they've shown a lot of the movie. Yeah. And from what I've judged, I think they've given away. I haven't the, seen. I don't think I've seen the, any trailers for it yet. So. I think they've given away the third act of the movie. Oh really? And the third act of the movie is when you have the big fights, the big sequences. Right. 
yeah, it's going to look cool on the big screen, but you know what? I've seen the highlights of it. Right. So it's like watching, I'll give you a good sports analogy. It's like watching the game. You can watch the whole game, catch catch the cool parts in it, and you still watch the whole game. Or you can watch the highlight reel and still get the Maybe general of feel uh, of the game. Gotcha. And but only you don't have to watch all the boring, boring stuff, stuff like the ref right? going meh, yeah. something something. I don't think the refs do this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in some rec league, the refs are like yeah, but uh, uh, I don't know if they are in real uh, real time. Okay, so. well they 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 do stuff with their hands like tweet something on the f- <laughs> you know. Yes, they do stuff with their hands. <laughs> tweet. Wow. Speaking of tweet, guys, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, at Cool Discussion. Uh, you can follow us on the Facebook, Cool Discussions, Facebook.com, Cool Discussions. Guys, um, we are going to cut it off right here, I believe. Yeah, and that's we are, uh, time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for spending some time with us. And we will talk with you next week. Don't forget to uh, download us on uh, iTunes. iTunes. Subscribe at YouTube. All that good stuff, guys. We will see you again next week for another exciting edition of Cool Discussions. See you later.